Great to be joined by David Baker, the 2020 Westgate Super Contest champion, a man that does a terrific job as a professional poker player as well. And David, hope you had a great holiday weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. I did, and uh, happy holidays to you and uh, all the viewers out there. Absolutely. Thank you, David. And let's first talk about what I thought was really the biggest game from Sunday, and that was the Packers versus the Dolphins. Certainly, we had some playoff implications in terms of the Buccaneers game, which we'll dive into a little bit later. But how surprised were you that the Dolphins weren't able to close this out? I'm someone that I backed the Dolphins in this one, went against my home state Green Bay Packers. Things were looking very good, and Tua, when they needed him most, he came up small. Yeah, this was a game that um, I really thought that I was going to like the Packers going into it. And um, I, I really have not believed in this Dolphins team the whole season. Um, but as the game started to get a little closer, I, I kind of flipped it and, and thought maybe we were just being a little recency biased with the Packers. And and I'm not really sure that they had addressed all their flaws from earlier in the season. And maybe we were banking too much on a couple of the wins versus lowly Bears and Rams. And the Dolphins have kind of showed us something in Buffalo, but this Dolphins team is just, they're just mediocre. I mean, Tua is a very mediocre quarterback, and I, I, as, as much as I think Mike McDonald is going to, McDaniel's going to be a, a terrific coach, he he's still situationally makes a lot of mistakes. So um, I, I really am not, I guess, that surprised with the fact that you have this veteran-laden Packers team, a quarterback and a coach that's been there before, kind of taking it to uh, the relatively inexperienced Dolphins. Um, I was on the Dolphins, but in hindsight, I think that was a, probably a pretty poor play, and uh, I think the Dolphins still have a lot of room to grow. Oh, I totally agree with you. I was right there with you on the Miami Dolphins. I was thinking, you know, at the Packers – they beat up on the Bears. They beat up on the Rams. Now they're going to be having to go down to Miami where Tua has played so well this year. And, well, no, it did not come up any sort of diamonds for me on Christmas Day. And I do think that that leads into a little bit more of a point as well. Though they did not cover the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they were able to have a double-digit comeback against the Arizona Cardinals to round out Sunday night. How much more of a premium should we be putting on these quarterbacks to be able to lead these drives? And it, it, perhaps should we be looking at that in-game a little bit more? Because that's something that I just leave myself thinking after we watch on Christmas Day. Aaron Rodgers staged a nice second-half comeback for the Packers. And Tom Brady, once again, do it in the final few minutes for the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean, we're in this analytical age where everybody just wants to look at, um, you know, uh, EPA and and all these uh, advanced stats, and this is the way to break down the teams. But there's no real way to quantify the ability to find ways to win games. And I think it's you know one of the reasons why the Vikings have been completely disrespected by the market, and um, you know why little by by teams that are led by Brady and Rodgers and you know, to some extent, Dak and, and some of these quarterbacks that have been around the around the block, um, you know, they get a little bump because they, they do find ways to win. And winning is a, a very hard thing to quantify. We want to just put it all in the luck and variance category, which there is a lot of luck and variance in football. But at the end of it, winning is still a skill. And, and is it the be all end all as to uh, how you're going to handicap? Is that you know, these teams have pulled out or these quarterbacks have pulled out uh, impressive victories. Not necessarily, but I don't think it's something you just want to completely dismiss and always just lend it to uh, it was variance or something like that. I mean, the, the Bucks are terrible. They're, they're a terribly coached team. They have horrible offensive line. Brady is atrocious. The running game is abysmal. Um, but yet they find ways to pull out some of these games and, and you can't just completely dismiss that. Um, that being said, I can't wait to fade them in the playoffs. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be a very popular pick if they somehow get to the playoffs, which I'm not even writing off uh, this Carolina team next week to go into Tampa and beat them. Uh, this Tampa Bay team is just not very good and they're going to face teams in the playoffs that aren't the Arizona 
a Cardinals and the New Orleans Saints. And those teams are just going to put distance between them. And and Brady's not going to have a chance to come back because, quite frankly, this Bucks team is just terrible. And you mentioned the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and whether or not they're going to make the playoffs. They absolutely, in my opinion, need to win their next game against the Carolina Panthers. And out of all the teams that we saw this week that I didn't necessarily have the world's highest opinion of, the team in which they either improved slash disimproved the most for me was the Carolina Panthers. Being able to get a multi-touchdown win against the Detroit Lions, that really said something to me. They've now won three out of their last four games. I don't know how much true talent they've got, but the way that this Panthers team has been rolling, it's been relatively impressive considering they sold at the deadline. Yeah, I mean, this this uh, Carolina Panthers team was, was completely left for dead when they fired Matt Rule and traded McCaffrey. Um, basically just cut Robbie Anderson. I mean, I know they got a, a pick for him, but um, basically they just gave up and, and it really looked like they were uh, positioning themselves to get a, a top couple pick to get one of these uh, elite quarterbacks coming out. But, you know, credit to, you know, Steve Wilkes. He's done a great job getting this team ready. The defense is hard nosed. They run the ball. They have a nice three headed uh, attack at running back. Sam Darnold is a quality NFL quarterback. Look, I mean, here, here that's, this is the kind of the thing. Sam Darnold's been uh, written off for dead. Um, and Tua was getting MVP hype. You switch those two teams, you switch those two players, and I think Sam Darnold would be in the conversation for MVP and Tua would be left for dead. I mean, I don't really even think there's that big of a difference between what Carolina's rolling out a quarterback and, and what uh, Miami is. I'm really surprised that it took this long to get, to get Sam back in the saddle. And uh, he's doing a good job managing that team. And I, I you know... As far as uh, guys down the line that that you can add to your team and kind of uh, build around, it wouldn't surprise me if Sam Darnold gets a real shot next year. I always liked him and and felt like he really needed, uh, you know, a little better supporting cast and a little better coaching before um, just being thrown on the scrap heap like a lot of these other quarterbacks that haven't succeeded. And I I haven't seen the opening line, but um, I'm going to think that Tampa's probably going to be getting a little bit too much respect in this game against Carolina, and I'm probably going to be looking for Carolina. I'm hoping it's – I think it's probably going to open. My guess would be around between five and six, five and a half, I would guess. Oh, I've already got it. It's anywhere between six and a half, and I'm seeing a stray seven out there as well, and I think that we're on the same page here. You absolutely can't lay seven points right now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Heck, I'd be hesitant laying three with them with the way that they've been playing at this point. Yeah, I mean, look, they had everything in front of them today. I know it wasn't a do-or-die game against Arizona, but this Arizona team went into Denver last week and got its doors blown off. This Denver team that went to L.A. and gave up 50 points to Baker Mayfield, Cam Akers, Tyler Higby, Brian Powell, Tutu Atwell. I mean, come on, no Aaron Donald, no offensive line. And they lost, they lost by 40 points. They blew the doors off of this Arizona team. This Arizona team had Trace McSorley, who probably is would be an average to below average great, uh, uh, CFL quarterback. He, he's, he's destined for the XFL. And they had, they had him dead to rights. I mean, this Tampa Bay team cannot be laying uh, a touchdown against Carolina. I'm sorry. I, I'm I will definitely be on Carolina. And if you're getting seven right now, I would say that this would be a good time to jump on it because I don't think I'm going to be alone in this. And I would not be surprised if that line gets down, you know, in the four and a half range by kickoff. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I do not think at all that we should be seeing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as this big of a favorite. I do recognize that maybe I have a little bit of a lack of talent with regards to the Carolina Panthers, but I mean, man. This is just something that has gotten a little bit too lofty as well. And we've been talking quite a bit about the Sunday games. On the flip side, we are certainly going to be hitting upon the Saturday games as well because something that I haven't really been talking about much here on the show, and I'm going to get the thoughts of David Baker, who is the 2020 Westgate Super Contest champion, is just what we all saw from the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles because we've been talking quite a bit about how with some of these quarterbacks, maybe there isn't such a big differential between the two of them. 
I do think that with what we saw in Dallas on Saturday, perhaps we should be giving a little bit more love to Jalen Hurts, and he was already getting his flowers to start out with. So we're going to be talking about that with David Baker, the 2020 Westgate Super Contest champion and professional poker player, next right here on the Great Peterson Experience. Being rejoined by the 2020 Westgate Super Contest champion, David Baker. And David, let's talk about what we saw on Saturday. We let off quite a bit with everything that we saw on Sunday, but... I mean, really a big takeaway for me was that Eagles versus Cowboys game. And the Cowboys, they were trailing throughout. They were looking a little bit shaky. They had the Dak Prescott interception early on, but they were able to shake it all off. They get the win. They get the cover, being able to win by six points. What were your overall takeaways? Because really the biggest takeaway I had from this game is that, yes, there is indeed a big drop-off from Gardner Minshew to Jalen Hurts. Oh, my biggest takeaway was that I ran really bad to lose Philadelphia plus four in that game. That's for sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I will say that, I mean, it, you can really look at this game uh, either direction. You can look at it half glass full, half glass empty. I mean, if you want to nitpick the Eagles, you can say that, you know, again, their defense is getting gashed. Uh, this unit that we thought was really um, elite, uh, especially against the pass, just uh, gave gave up heaps of yards to uh, to CD and Dak, and uh, couldn't stop when they needed to near the end. Um, Darius Slay had uh, probably one of his worst games as a pro. I mean, he he committed some egregious plays out there. Um, half half full. I mean the. The Eagles put up 34 points on Dallas on the road with Gardner Minshew and had four turnovers. So um, on the other side of it, uh, I mean, I think this Eagles team is is still fine. Uh, Minshew is, you know, he almost uh, led them to a win against, you know, a top seven or eight team in the NFL on the road. Um, so, I mean, the future is kind of bright for the Eagles. Um Obviously, they if they could have finished that off, they could have been a little more uh, careful with Hertz. Um, I'm not sure what his prognosis is for this week, but they've got to win one of these last two games at home versus the Saints or the Giants. My guess is, I mean, they're going to try to finish it off this week and then give him two weeks off, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the I thought they both had some positives that can't, to pull out of that game and also some. Uh, cause for concerns but I mean these two teams are going to be in the thick of it at the end I expect to see both these teams in the final four in the NFC yeah but I do think that really in terms of Saturday as well we saw a lot of teams that they had some positives and some negatives with them just like you're talking about the Eagles and we'll say a little bit more about the Cincinnati Bengals as well though I'm not going to get too bent out of shape out of the second half that we saw from the Bengals Bengals now 11 and 2 in their last 13 games they win and Thanks to a missed extra point. If you took the three, or if you laid the three, you were able to get the cover on the Cincinnati Bengals. But what were your overall thoughts in watching this game? Because Jacoby Myers, the man that, yeah, the old lateral play that we saw last week out here in lovely Las Vegas, he was the man that came up with a tip touchdown. And being on the Bengals in that game, I thought, man, this one's going to be going against me in pretty heartbreaking fashion. But Fortunately, it did not, but I thought it was a really fascinating game. We certainly saw some warts from the Bengals, but by and large, still really like what I'm seeing from this team. Yeah, I mean, this Bengals uh, team, I've continued to pound week after week, and uh, it was my my best play of the week. This week, they were up 22 nothing, had the ball at the Patriots' 40-yard line, had completely dominated the game, and then you know, Burrow threw an inexplicable pick six. Then you had the Hail Mary that, you know, fell into the arms um, of the Patriots. And next thing you know, they're sweating out, um, you know, a game at the five-yard line with a chance to cover and win the game outright. Um, so on one side, I kind of felt a little unlucky, but also very lucky there, the way that the, all the things kind of fell in the Patriots' lap. Um, to get the cover. I do think this Bengals team is definitely one of the top five teams in the NFL. And right now they might be playing the best football. Um, very excited to watch this game. I mean, I, I think the bills and the Bengals are, they might be my two favorite teams in the NFL right now. So 
Um, excited to watch this game on Monday. Uh, I think this is going to be a one possession game. And, uh, you know, I love both these quarterbacks. I love the skill position players. I mean, um, this is just going to be a great football game. And, uh, you know, Cincinnati has everything right laid out in front of them. If they beat the Bills they and the Ravens, they have at least the two seed. And then um, there's a chance that the Chiefs lose and they could get the one seed and the bye, which is a pretty amazing accomplishment considering where the Bengals were um, and what we kind of thought of them on Halloween night when the Browns just uh, destroyed them. And we really do have a big three out in the AFC. We're talking about the Bills and the Bengals right now. Very fair to throw in there the Chiefs as well. And all three looked relatively solid over the weekend. The Bills, they completely take it to the Bears. The Chiefs, they were able to get a very rare cover as a more than a touchdown favorite against the Seattle Seahawks, which, man, things have really gone off the rails with the Seattle Seahawks as well. But how do you take a look at these top three teams in the AFC? Because I just take a look at it. I think there's very little separating them. And I think the biggest key is perhaps experience here because I still give a little bit of a default edge to the Chiefs because Patrick Mahomes has been in the AFC title game time and time again and has been in those spots. Yeah, I I mean, I think you're splitting hairs when you're talking about these three teams. That's why uh, this race for the home field advantage the last couple weeks is really, um, really important. I mean, the one seed is is super important. I mean, whoever gets the one seed is probably going to dodge the other two and then probably have a they're going to have a buy and then a home game versus most likely, um, you know, the Jags or the Chargers or the Dolphins. So um, or the Ravens. And, you know, I think any one of these three teams is going to be a significant favorite against whoever that is. And the other two are going to have to play each other in the two, three seed game. Um so it's very important to get the one seed. Whoever gets the one seed, I would definitely install as a as a reasonable favorite because I think that two three games just going to be a coin flip game anyway. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I experience, yeah. But I mean, Burrow led him to the Super Bowl last year. Josh Allen, you know, had the game of a lifetime, and I'm gonna. I mean, he essentially led him to a win against the Chiefs. I mean, it's not his fault that you know they didn't squib kick it, and with 13 seconds left, Mahomes, you know, got that got him into field goal position i mean allen did everything that was asked to him so i'm not really gonna buy too much into the experience all three of these teams have been deep in the playoffs and um i'm excited to watch this uh afc playoffs for sure um and i'm excited to see what what we're going to get out of i think i think the jags and the chargers are are two teams that are really trending upward um they're not in the category of these three but Look, in today's NFL, I mean, you you have upsets weekly and you have uh, mediocre teams and good teams taking these great teams to to the brink every week. So um, there are no walkovers, really. I mean, we it's easy for us to sit here and say that these three teams are going to be there. The Eagles and the Cowboys and the Niners are going to be there. But at the end of the day, I mean, all these these teams that are going to make the playoffs are decent teams. and there is no just completely dominant team and, and it wouldn't We're going to see some upsets and there's going to be a team that's going to surprise like last year's Bengals. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be the chargers or the Vikings or the giants or who it's going to be, but there is going to be a surprise team that, that finds its way into the final four and maybe even, you know, the Super Bowl. And I'm so glad that you bring up the Jags as well, because I do think that they're getting that spot in the AFC South it looks like they're going to be without for the Tennessee Titans without Ryan Tannehill for the rest of the year. And for the Jags, I feel like the light has finally come on for Trevor Lawrence. He was dealing with a complete sure. buffoon as a coach in season number one. And I feel like this is just one of those Jags teams that they're a young team and sort of like the Bengals did last year, not to say that they're going to have the same run that the Bengals did, but you're sort of seeing that same trajectory with Trevor Lawrence ascending as a quarterback. I 100% agree with you. I, I think the Jags are uh, really proving themselves to be a um, good team. I mean, uh, in the NFC, you know, we're just kind of writing off the South winner, whether it's Tampa or Carolina or even long shot Saints. But, um, you know, I don't think any of those teams can make any noise. This Jaguar team can can make some noise. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, to me, is, uh, you know, proving himself to be worthy of that number one pick. Um, I think at this point, he's a top 
maybe five or six quarterback in the league um, and getting up into that point where we want to have serious discussions about them uh, and their future. Uh, I think a lot of us made fun of the wide receiver signings of Kirk and Zay Jones for a lot of money, but uh, those guys have balled out and uh, Trevor's doing the job. And as we found out with quarterbacks, he needs some sort of receivers around them and Trevor Lawrence is making the most out of them. And I know that David Baker, 2020 Westgate Super Contest champion, mentioned the Chargers, and we will bring them up next right here on VEASAN, the Sports Bank Network. We're back here on the Greg Peterson Experience on VEASAN, the Sports Bank Network, being rejoined by David Baker, the 2020 Westgate Super Contest champion and a man that makes his living playing professional poker. And David, I think that the Chargers are a very fascinating team. We were mentioning them as we were talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars and how they could be a little bit frisky in the playoffs as well. And as we know, for the Chargers, they're going to be playing in Monday Night Football, being a four-point favorite on the road against the Colts. And next week, they get the Rams, which they lose the Rams. That would not be too terrific. I think that that could be a very nice sell-high spot on the Rams because, well, their stock should be ascending a little bit after scoring 51 points, even though it was against the Broncos. But how do you see this Chargers team? And just if there might be a spot to be able to back them, whether it be on Monday Night Football against the Rams or perhaps in both spots. I, I, I've been a Chargers supporter all year. Uh, I've kind of uh, weathered the storm and um, now we're on the other side and I think this Chargers team is getting healthy. They're finding themselves and uh, this line tomorrow doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Four points. The The Colts are a bottom feeder team as far as I'm concerned. And they had a couple spirited games of late, but this team's just not very talented. And now they have Nick Foles. Is he even an NFL quarterback anymore? Um, I mean, they had Matt Ryan who couldn't do much. They pulled him for Sam Ellinger, who was pretty obvious that he was not an NFL ready. He's not NFL ready. Then they went back to Matt Ryan after basically saying he was done for the year uh, starting for them instead of Nick Foles. And now they're going to Nick Foles. Um, I just have to question, you know, why have they not, had they not gone to him earlier if he's at all capable? And I just have to think that he's probably not um, John, no Jonathan Taylor. Uh, and now, this Chargers team with its full complement of receivers, uh, maybe the best quarterback in the NFL gets another prime time slot, um, at least the top three quarterback, top three or four quarterback in the league. And um, I think this team's kind of finding itself and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to pile in on the Chargers both tomorrow and, uh, and against the Rams. I do not trust the Rams. I do not like the Rams. I do not uh, today was a nothing game as far as I'm concerned. This was a more an indictment on the on the Broncos than the Rams. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the Broncos obviously either hate Russell Wilson, hate Hackett, or hate both of them, and they kind of lay down on this in this game. I've never seen a team quit as bad as this team did, so I'm not going to take anything positive out of this from the Rams uh, side of it. And I'll be ready to back the Chargers this week, and I'll be ready to back them next week. And uh, if they're getting a, a touchdown in the playoff games against uh, one of these big teams, uh, I'm, I might even look to back them then. So uh, I really like what I'm seeing out of this Chargers team. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on, I'm fully on this bandwagon. And when it comes to the Denver Broncos, they have to go on the road to play against the Chiefs. And you just mentioned it. It was one of the saddest efforts I've really seen in the history of football. I think that all NFL fans deserve the gift that they got. Them getting slimed on national television and a bunch of children laughing for three hours and Patrick Starr making cooking jokes at Russell Wilson. That was absolutely tremendous right there. So I was very much a fan of that. But I do think that it's interesting taking a look at the Broncos now being between 12 and 12 and a half point underdogs against the Kansas City Chiefs because I'd be willing to lay that number right now. I don't know if we're going to get Nathaniel Hackett still on the sidelines because I understand you don't want to be firing a guy on Christmas night that's just not in the holiday spirit. But this guy has to go, in my opinion. And I know that we're asking the question, is it Nathaniel Hackett? Is it Russell Wilson? I think that the answer is it's really just both. And it leads to a very, very toxic dynamic and feels like nobody's responding well to it at all. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to lay the points, but I'm definitely not going to take the points. I do not trust this team. I didn't trust this team. I haven't trusted this team. And then all of a sudden, they gave me a reason to, you know, to back them against uh, this Rams team, and it bit me in the butt. And uh, that's not going to happen again. The Chiefs are still playing for a lot, uh, playing for that number one seed. And uh, they're not going to know the results of that Bills-Bengals game before they play. So, I mean, they have to go out there and play and hope that the Bengals beat the Bills and then they'll be in possession of the, the one seed. So, um, yeah, I have, I have no interest in backing the Broncos. As far as I'm concerned, there's not a quarterback uh, that I would rather have less right now than Russell Wilson. I would, if I was, if the Jets called me tomorrow and said, I'll trade you Zach Wilson for Russell Wilson, he's on a plane out. I mean, I think Russell Wilson is, is dust. So, um, yeah, I probably won't watch a whole heck of a lot of that football game on Sunday. There's a lot more intriguing games. Yep, that is going to be January 1st. There's going to be bowl games on. I'm sure that Insert Your Streaming Services here is going to have a nice video, I guess you could call it, marathon. That's much better to watch rather than watching the Denver Broncos. Unless if we're able to get Nickelodeon sliming on them all over again, then I might be a little bit more willing to watch that. This game might not necessarily be the most savory of them, but... It has a lot of playoff implications. It is the Ravens and the Steelers. Ravens are going to be making the playoffs somehow, some way. They're not out of it in terms of the division as well. And for Pittsburgh, a very inspired effort against the Raiders. They were able to get the job done late, 13-10. to 10, The same score that we saw in that immaculate reception game 50 years ago. What do you make out of the Ravens being a four-point favorite right now? Because I take a look at the Ravens and... I just don't know what we're going to be able to get out of Lamar Jackson. He was supposed to play this last week. Didn't. I'd be surprised if he doesn't play. But I think the bigger question in this game is, will Lamar Jackson be at 100%? And from all indications and from everything that we saw even prior to him sustaining this most recent injury, I think the answer is no. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether Lamar's playing or not, but it, uh, it doesn't really have a whole lot of effect on, on me with this game. I'm going to be backing the Steelers in this one. I like what the Steelers have looked like uh, the last month, month and a half, especially while Pickett's been in there. Um, it took them till the end to get the job done versus the Raiders. They weren't all that impressive, but uh, that game had a lot of weather and it wasn't the best of conditions. Um, and this Steelers team has, has faced Lamar a bunch. I mean, I think Lamar is really at his most dangerous when, you know, teams are not as prepared for a player like Lamar. Uh, but since they've lost their receivers, uh, I don't really, I'm not real fearful of this Ravens offense and it's very hard for them to cover numbers. And I expect this to be a low scoring, hard fought defensive game. Uh, I'll be looking to take the, the three to four points. And if Lamar plays, it might even get North of four. So um, I'm excited about this game being flexed and uh, I will, I will most definitely be on the Steelers on that one. Yep, I don't blame you there. And we were mentioning this a little bit too. If you do see Lamar Jackson be confirmed in the game, perhaps you see this go a little bit north of four. I don't think that this is going to be approaching like any key numbers or anything like that, but you could be able to get even a little bit more value than four. I mean, say that you have yourself a 17-13 game, getting a four and a half instead of a four could make a little bit of a difference as well. So we shall see how that line marinates. And is there any other game for week 17 that just initially is catching your eye, whether it's something that you might fire in on early on in the week, or you just want to see how things marinate in general? Well, uh, as far as for betting wise, um, I, I really like uh, at first look, I like the Jags uh, laying only four points against the Texans. Um, the, they're not good. The Texans aren't going to surprise the Jags this time. They beat them last time. Um, so they'll have the full, their full attention. And yeah, the Texans have looked better the last few weeks, but this Jag seems on a whole different level. Uh, the only, the only reservation that I might have is I'm not sure how much this game even means to Jacksonville as far as winning the division. They just have to beat Tennessee. Uh, regardless of the result this week, but maybe there's some backdoor ways that they could wild card. And so they have to win. And also it's a young team. I think they're just, they're just out enjoying the fact that they're playing well. So um, I do like them. I'm interested in this Miami new England game. I have a lot of 
futures on under New England wins and uh, a lot of things tied to New England losing. So um, I wish that the Dolphins were playing a little bit better for this one because I'm not sure I trust to uh, first Belichick right now. But um, I'm, a, I'm interested to see this game. I don't really have a take on it right now, but definitely a game I'll be uh, looking to watch on Sunday. Absolutely. And David, always appreciate your time. Happy holidays to you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. Happy holidays to you as well. Visit VEASAN.com to get current odds. Listen for free, find showtimes, and download VEASAN's sports betting podcasts.